<laughs> All right, Michael, uh, if you are just joining us, uh, I have with us uh, not just a friend, but somebody who is a friend for business uh, in this nation as well as the Carolinas, a gentleman named Mike McGuire, Michael McGuire, who's the Chief Executive Officer at Grand Thornton. And one of the many things, and Mike, if you will allow me to say this, one of the many things I like about you is you always look at the class that's half full. You are very optimistic, and there aren't many things that you are willing to try. So happy Christmas, Mike, and welcome to this very short dialogue, but hopefully candid. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Chris. It's great to see you. And it's uh, been looking forward to this with you. So uh, let's get started. Uh, you know, Mike, Grant Thornton, you, through not just public conversations, but I know some of the dialogues that you've had uh, with other leaders, that you really have this, this passion for change. And right on the heels of that, you're not afraid of disruption. Um, where did that come from? And, and how, do you, how does this dialogue, how do you deploy this dialogue across the enterprise at Grand Thorn? What, what drives you around this? Well, I think, first of all, you know, we're, we're in a client service business. So there's one of the nice things about us is that we have our finger on the pulse of what's going on uh, out there in the business world across multiple industries. So, so we get to see disruption at, at various stages. You know, I mean, I think if you think, um, a lot of times people think disruption is something that is is like nuclear, but a lot of times I think disruption happens over a period of time. I mean, if if you think about, uh, I, I try to analogize our business to other industries. If you think about uh, the banking business, for example, you know, my mom was a bank teller. And I remember back in the mid to late 70s, she came home one day uh, for, for dinner at, at the end of her work day and said, you know, my my this business is going to change. I'm a bank teller and they'd have this new thing called the ATM, right? That, that had just come out. And so you know, that was a change there. And then now today, you know, you do a lot of your banking through online banking through your smartphone. So if you think about that, that the, the mm -hmm. banking business has been disrupted really, you know, for 40 years almost. And so sometimes I think people look back at it and think, gosh, what, what the heck happened? But, uh, but it does happen sometimes a little more gradually. But, uh, you know, we get a chance to see it. So we see multiple industries and, and uh, at different areas or different uh, stages of disruption. So we can actually apply that to, to our own business. And so, you know, I think that all businesses are going to be disrupted uh, with technology. I would say in our business, if you think about it at Grant Thornton, the, the biggest change in my career in public accounting, quite honestly, was the... Uh, was personal computers that happened right when I started my career in 1982. I mean, I remember the first Apple we got, the first IBM PC, XT, AT, and you know how we started, you know, moving into things like VisiCalc and, and Lotus Notes and things. And you know, at the time we did that, we were thinking, gosh, I mean, at that time our work was done with paper, pencils, and calculators. And and so I've seen it in, in my career, but but in today's environment with all the technology we have. You know, we see it as something that's a tremendous enable of our business. We don't see it as something that is a threat to us. Uh, I think our organization here at Grant Thornton, our, our approach is what we call status go. And we want to embrace change. We want to be the ones that are are grabbing a hold of it and, and leading it. We don't fear it. We want to embrace mm -hmm. it. So, uh, so that's kind of what our attitude is. But let me take that last part where you, you embrace it and don't fear it. There, there is an element of uncertainty that can turn into um, fright, can turn into inaction by in employees. So how do you, not just the chief executive of Grant Thornton, Mike, but how do you, at the top of the, of the leadership chain, run out and forth with the, the standard to say, yeah, this thing can be scary, but don't be afraid to do X. So how do you incite people to do X? Well, I, you know, from our standpoint, it's really engaging our people in the change, making them part of the change. Uh, I started out with this uh, about four years ago when I became the CEO of the organization. And I said, you know, we, we're going to have to change. You can see, you know, there are a lot of cliches, a lot of, you know, overused examples of things like whether it's Blockbuster and Netflix or Kodak and, 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 uh, and digital photography. But, you know, we started looking at it and saying that we need to start uh, embracing the change. But, but we're lucky from in the standpoint that uh, our, our average age in our business, our average age at Grant Thornton is 26. OK, so, you know, I a few weeks ago, we had our annual partners meeting and I had Gene Kranz as one of the speakers. And Gene was the flight director at Apollo. He's he's the one that uh, was the flight director for the lunar landing, Apollo 11, and the one that brought back Apollo 13. 
uh, safely to, to Earth. And, you know, he I asked him the question and I said, how, how what was the average age of NASA when you put man on the moon? He said 27. And so it's the same kind of thing. So the way what we've been able to do is I'm dealing with whether you want to millennials or, you know, Generation Z, whatever generation you want to call it. So they're actually engaged and involved in, uh, you know, in the digital environment and everything they do. And so that's the way they do it. So what I'm actually trying to do is, is, is use them to help us transform, make them part of it. And one of the things that we did in August of this year is we launched an enterprise wide ideation slash innovation platform. So it's being able to get ideas from everybody in the organization on four fronts. You know, how do we engage with our clients better? How do we engage with our people better? How do we run our business better? And what kind of innovative services can we provide? And so I'm now, we have every person in our organization, every person can contribute ideas as to how to transform uh, a Grant Thornton. So making them part of it, I think, is really a key. Uh, and I think that the, so far, I mean, it's I think it's been working. We've been getting a lot of great ideas and making them part of it, I think, is a big thing. You know, the other thing we did, if I look back, you know, is you have to have a culture that will be able to uh, embrace change as well. So we started on I wanted to get our culture right in the first place. So we invested a lot uh, in our culture. We call it our culture journey. But our culture journey was how do you create a culture of of innovation that and, and, and rapid change? So that's really been kind of the foundation in our organization is when you let that's the tone from the top. And then we you know, we bring it around by putting in some foundational uh, platforms in our, in our organization to help us do it and actually execute it, which is what we did with the ideation innovation platform. Well, uh, well let me go back. So the structure of, any, of most public accounting firms are the partnerships. And those are, are traditionally known to be, and I'll use this term, like I don't mean this by Grant Thornton or any particular firm, but sometimes stay very, uh, very predictable. So when you've got that type of historic and legacy organization, how do you really shake it up so they do embrace change and start that process maybe with senior leaders and then deploy it across? Yeah, I think, you know, when we started our organization, we actually started with our culture journey from the top down uh, because, you know, we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, that those were the those were the folks that were going to embrace the change. If, if you don't have it aligned from the very top of the organization, it's very hard. And, and if you think about our business, I mentioned the average age of our of our entire organization is 26. But we really have everybody. You know, we've got the, the, the generations, whatever you want to call them, you know, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, mm, yeah. you know, millennials, everybody. That's one group. Right. And we've got a large group of those. But we also at the top of the organization, if you think about it, they're primarily baby boomers. I mean, I'm a baby boomer. OK, so. So you have to be able to get the top of the organization to also be able to say, yeah, change is going to be good. And that's really why we started, you know, with our culture. But on the other hand, you know, going back to what I opened up with is, uh, you know, our, the, our partners are out serving clients, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. So so they're seeing this, uh, you know, this, this happen and they're getting the same, you know, same kinds of questions. So, you know, our, our, our partners can talk pretty readily about some of the new technologies that are out there, which which really helps us. Does that give you some uh, street cred with with your clients when they see you in a very public way going through this change and some of these struggles internally? Yeah, it does, and uh, you know, it's not a. Um, I mean, it's a common. I, I spend a lot of time with CEOs of clients and and prospects, and that's that's really the the, the main thing that's on their mind is. You know, you know, kind of what what's on the horizon? You know, how are you coping with it? You know, what's the time frame? What do you see in terms of, you know, how do how do we make our investments? I mean, you know, it's um, you know, those are some pretty significant investments that people have to be able to think through, um, whether it's in their te technology platform or let's let's just say you want to be more of a, a data driven firm. You know, what do you do? Do you go out and hire a bunch of data scientists or exactly how do you go about how do you go about doing? What kinds of investments do you, do you need to be make? I, th I think there are there are, there are a lot of questions, and we that's what we get from our clients is we get questions, and uh, so we feel like that the fact that 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 we're disrupting ourselves, if you will, 
mm-hmm. uh, is is helping us uh, to be able to be more relevant and provide you know better advice to our clients. Is there any in just a couple minutes left here, Mike, and I'll, I'll let you go. And I appreciate you taking this time carving it out. But is there someone out there that you look at and say, you know, now that company, that person, that organization? They've done it right. They're not afraid of it. It's really changed the, the way that they do business. Well, certainly I, I look at companies like Amazon. I mean, you know, they, if you think about, you know, what they've been able to do on their on their platform, um, you know, if you th- stop and think about the acquisition of, uh, of Whole Foods, I mean, the fact that they now got into, they had to shift, you know, on Amazon, just, you know, shipping normal, you know, UPS or U.S. Postal Service or FedEx or whoever they now they're now they're getting in they had to get into fresh food delivery when they bought Whole Foods. I mean the fact that as quickly as they acquired Whole Foods, the amount of time between that acquisition and the time I started getting, you know, the ability to order fresh food from Whole Foods on Amazon Prime was record speed. Right? I mean you, you start thinking about what that allows you to do and how quickly they transitioned from just a bookseller in, in retail to now they're disrupting the grocery business, but they get a lot of their revenues and a lot of their profits out of web hosting, right? With Amazon web services. So they're constantly thinking about the things that they do. And so I think a lot of people, you know, will look at them and see, um, you know, someone that has completely disrupted others, others businesses, but they're also very quick on the take, you know, to, uh, to be able to implement, and uh, you know, execute acquisitions and uh, and integrate them and take advantage of it more, far more quickly than what companies have, have historically been able to do. I'm like, thank, thank you. You know, I could, as we have talked about this for a long time, uh, I find your your leadership on this compelling. But thanks for carving up the time and sitting down in front of your computer. Is is non intuitive that might be for both of us at least initially? Yeah, I think it was it was great. Thank you so much. Well, I think it's one of those things. I was thinking before we got connected that. You know, just the fact that we're able to do this like we are sitting here on our computers and have this conversation, I think, is a good you know, indication of, you know, if you think about what we what would we have done with this, you know, 15 years ago or so, you know, we'd have gone into a studio and shoot, I would have gotten makeup on and all this kind of stuff for for one of these things. And here we are. Turn on the camera and there you are. And we're done. So uh, I think that just goes to show you the you know, the power of technology and it's exciting. I, I think it's very exciting. I don't feel threatened about it. I, I'm actually invigorated about it. So, uh, so it's good to join you and uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, Mike, thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and safe travels. Same to you, Chris. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.